Hello everyone. So in today's film, I'm going to be talking to you about my foundation routine. Now I have many different types of foundation routines. Of course, it depends on the kind of event or day that you will be having, where you'll be wearing your foundation to, what kind of makeup is suitable. And the foundation routine for which that I'm going to share with you today is a full coverage foundation routine. It is quite transformative of the skin. It definitely perfects the skin. It blanks out any imperfections infections and overall it is very full coverage so I can definitely confirm it is not very natural looking. It is slightly mask like but it definitely perfects the skin, it photographs fantastically and it looks great. What I love about makeup is that you can do so many things with it. You can try something that is very full on or something that is very minimal. I like the diversity of options when it comes to makeup but this technique of using this foundation method was something that I really developed a very long time ago when I was a lot younger and for those of you who are unaware it is very difficult to find pale formulations, pale foundations, pale concealers, pale powder foundations, pale powders that are effective on the very palest of skin. You will sometimes get a foundation that has a fantastic formulation but the color is completely incorrect or you will have a foundation with a fantastic color but the formulation can be a little bit inept. So when it comes to foundation I definitely have different preferences so I will have one foundation which I think is fantastic for per se a low coverage minimal makeup look. Then I will have others that are more suitable for a medium coverage to a full. I am somebody that tends to either do full makeup or minimal makeup. I don't really do in between, it's very middle class. So I like to do my under eye colour correction before I apply this foundation. I don't really use concealer with this foundation because of course it is so full coverage. So first of all I take the Cryolan Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D1W which is a fantastic shade and I'm applying it with a Charles Fox 814605 brush. So I apply it to areas that are slightly more blue and I wouldn't say I'm being neat with it at all. I'm just applying it to areas that are slightly darker or have blue or grey. Now even though I shave my eyebrows, they always leave a slight cast across the skin unless of course I wax them. So I always go through over the brow just to conceal the greyness for which that they create once shaven. And I do apply quite a thick bit of this to the under eye. But I'm going to go in and blend it in just a moment. And I always pull upwards and outwards in this area as I do tend to find that there's a slight purpley bit that descends there. So I like to almost cut it off before it gets the chance to cause any form of offence. And I always apply a little bit of it to my chin in the areas where I have the highest concentration of beard hair because even though there is visibly no hair, I'm always very superstitious that I might have a little bit of five o'clock shadow and that would be rather awful. And of course, when you are somebody that chooses to style themselves in a fashion that is considered to be more traditionally feminine, when you've applied a full face of makeup and then you have a shadow or a cast here, it almost screams mad as largely as a phallus entity. Then I take a Zova 102 brush and I just stipple it into place. It doesn't really matter if it's that neat at this point because we're going to be going over it with foundation regardless. And I do the same to the brow area. Now I have received a substantial amount of feedback regarding the Cryolan Demacolor Cream Concealers. A lot of you have said that they are quite hard and you find them very difficult to work with and that they are quite drying. My recommendation for this, because I have the same issue as well, that they are quite dry creams. They are fantastic, they come in fantastic shade range quite unusual shades but the formula is very concentrated. It is more on the dry side because the cream is designed to ensure longevity. So it isn't a very greasy emollient cream formula. You're not going to have any mounts and talons with it. But what I would recommend to get it to be more easy to work with is to actually disturb it in its palette. So really scrape around and mush it around and just lift the product up. And I'd use something like this which is a makeup spatula. This one is by Supercover and I have found that to be very effective just to lift the product. Then I'm taking a synthetic Zova 227 brush and I'm just buffing the edges of the concealer for which that we've applied. Then I pat through it. I don't really want to disturb the areas for where I want the most concentration of the color corrector. So I just pat through it lightly just to ensure that the texture is correct. And I just buff that out. I use a similar technique. So that is my color corrector now applied. I have strategically placed it in the areas for which that I wanted to brighten and eradicate any either blueness, purple 
or gray from the skin. And just before I continue on to foundation, I must mention that I had gone in and primed my skin first of all with some of Embryolix La Creme Concentrate. I don't necessarily use a primer under my foundation. I don't really like primers under foundation. I prefer setting sprays to primers to ensure longevity. However, because my own skin is quite dry, I like to use a moisturizer that is quite emollient. And of course, the foundation for which that I'm going to apply and then all the powder that comes on top of it is quite heavy. It can be quite drying to the skin. So I like to nourish the skin before I go in with product. I also applied some of the medicated chapstick to the lips just to really moisturize the lips before I go in and apply makeup. It also acts like a lubricant so when you apply your foundation and if any of it goes on the lips it is easier to remove because you've applied a balm to the lips. So the foundation for which that I'm going to be using today is actually a mix of two foundations. One is a pure white. This is the skin base in the shade 01, which is a pure white foundation, and it is by Elamasca. It's absolutely fantastic for just lightening and lifting foundations. And the second foundation for which that I'm going to use, mixing the two together, is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation in the shade 1C1 Shell. You can really create a custom shade by mixing foundations together. It is a little bit tedious and it is slightly inconvenient to have to mix foundations and I'm certain if you are somebody of the very fairest of skin tones you will also struggle to find foundations suiting for you so you will know this procedure quite well. It is tedious but it is necessary when aiming to create the correct shade applicable for your own skin tone. Of course skin base comes in many shades. Shade 02 is actually relatively close to my own natural skin tone however I don't really like the foundation on its own on, on my own skin because I do tend to find that it slides around on me. That's not the case for everybody. But when mixed with the Double Wear, which is actually one of my most very favorite foundations, I very much like this product. I just wish their shade range was substantially lighter. So I mix roughly around 50-50. When mixed together, it creates a marvelous foundation. Of course, both foundations when mixed together compromise one another's formulation, but I do tend to find that this has been the best foundation mix when trying to achieve a flawless, pale, full coverage foundation mix. So I give both of them a good shake first of all. Now you may use the back of your hand, you may use a spatula. I have my little brass plate here with me and I first of all take the double wear, I just shake it until it comes out and I just apply almost a pea-sized amount, not too much. And I can put a little bit of it on my skin and as you can see that is substantially too dark. And then beside it, I just apply the white. Now, of course, this is more than you will probably ever need. And I do tend to apply more white usually than the regular foundation color. This is enough foundation to color correct one half of the moon. And then I just mix the two together like so. And to do so, I'm using a Tina Earnshaw number no. six brush. Now I can kind of tell when it's becoming either too light or too dark and I think this might be just right, a little bit on the dark side. It's also important to remember that double wear oxidizes over time so it gets darker. So it's important to go in with it being slightly lighter. Of course it'll oxidize and once you apply powder to it, it'll look substantially darker than it looks right now. Now it may appear as if though I'm putting on a shade that is substantially too light for my skin. But as you can see, when I take it down the neck, it really starts to blend into my neck and into my decolletage area. Of course, as I said, this foundation will oxidize, it will look darker over time, and once I go in and apply powder to it, it will of course look darker. Now, it is quite mask-like, but it does make the skin look flawless. And I apply it everywhere, so I really coat my whole face with it. And I always apply quite a thick layer of it to my jaw. I don't really have a beard, but I'm always slightly superstitious that one might appear. And I do take that substantially down the neck just to create a really seamless blend. It doesn't really matter at this point how it looks. It is quite sloppy, the application, as I do tend to just slap it on and hope for the best. Then I'm going back in with our Zova 102 brush and taking some of the foundation on the brush and I'm just stippling the product, first of all. So when you stipple the product, it works almost like a beauty blender. It does a similar thing. However, sponges and beauty blenders, they do tend to remove excess product. You just start to really stipple the foundation into place. You might see that it might be a little bit too light or too dark. I think I might have gone a tiny bit lighter than I needed to today. 
but once we set it all through, it will change colour. Now, one technique that I like to use when disguising the appearance of pores on the nose is to actually take the brush and buff the product in. This just really hides the pore, and once you've buffed it in, you will find that there are slight streaks or smears. So what you can actually then go in and do is just stipple on top of it. That will disguise the appearance of pores. And it's always a good idea just to look around the face just to see if you've missed any areas. As you can see, I've just missed the tip of my nose, which is quite easy to do given the size of the thing. So it really is just a mask. It is quite a mask-like foundation. It really just conceals everything. So it creates a perfect flawless blank base. Now, when I apply this combination, it is almost like a layer of cement. I do tend to find it works best when you apply it and then set it. Then go in with powder products on top of it. I wouldn't necessarily go in and apply cream concealers to contour with this mix. I don't particularly think that cream concealing looks that fantastic on the very fairest of skin tones, because most cream products do tend to be too warm. It can be done, but my own personal preference is to contour with powders on myself. Within my work, it is completely different, but personally, when I apply my own makeup, I do like to contour with powders instead of creams. Now I'm going to go in and set everything that we have applied, and I prefer to use powders that are slightly more fatty. I don't really like the fine ones. I do tend to find when applying a lot of foundation and then going in with the finer powders, I do tend to over apply the powder. I can find it actually over dries the foundation. So when setting the foundation, I like to use a powder that has a slightly more, what I consider a fatter texture. So it isn't totally fine. It has slight body to it. I do tend to find particular products are more suiting for particular things. So the finer powders, for example, MAC Cosmetics Prep and Prime or Laura Mercier's Universal Setting Powder are very fine in their formula. Very, very fine formulas. However, when setting this kind of foundation and the amount of it, I do prefer to use powders that are more thick in their texture, something that's more fatty. I used to use the Illamasqua Loose Powder, which was translucent. It was fantastic for setting this foundation mix. I also like Inglot's Loose Powders, but today I'm going to be using Kryolan's Loose Translucent Powder in the shade TL3. So I actually set the under eyes first of all, and I'm just going to go back in with our synthetic 227 brush. No additional product, but I'm just dabbing it under the eyes. Where the foundation and the concealer has started to crease, I want to resurface the area so it's totally smooth and there's no creases in the foundation before we go in and set it. It is important to do this so that you have no lines. So you just go back in and blend just to ensure that there are no lines and the foundation hasn't settled into the fine lines. And then you go in and set it through. And then I'm just setting the under eyes with a Wayne Goss number no. two brush. This is actually one of my favorite brushes and particularly for this purpose. Once you've applied the powder, if you apply it too much, you will feel it being a little bit dry. I have applied quite a bit of powder today. It isn't too dry, but it certainly feels dry. Then I'm taking a Real Techniques blusher brush. This brush is actually fantastic for setting this kind of foundation because it almost works like a paw as well as a powder puff. So you can press on setting powder and I really like it for that purpose and it can also go into all the nooks and crannies of the face. So what I do is I just pack on powder. As you can see, it's quite a lot of it. And I set everything that we have applied very thoroughly. The foundation starts to darken once you apply powder to it. If I compare the other side, you will see it appears slightly lighter because it is, of course, reflecting the light. It is still shiny. But once you apply the powder, it mats it down, of course, reducing the shine. And you just have to go in and set everything through thoroughly. Just go in and feel the areas that might feel a little bit as if so they require a little bit more setting. You can always apply a little bit more powder to areas that feel a little wet. And you can just go in and just pat and feel everything just to ensure that it's all set through. And once I've done that, one thing I like to do is just pat around just to dust off any excess powder. And I also set through the eyebrow area. I don't take product over the eyelid. I just ensure that where the foundation starts to blend into the eyelid, where I have no foundation or product, I blend it and then set it so that it is seamless. I'm of course now going to go in and apply eyebrows, eye makeup and lip makeup. So I have gone in and applied eyebrows, 
eyeshadow, mascara, lip liner, and a little bit of lipstick. Now I'm going to go in and apply contour, blusher, and highlighter. And as you can see, once you start to build up the rest of the makeup with eyebrows, eye makeup, lipstick, and of course, once we go in and apply our contour, our blusher, and our highlighter, the rest of the foundation for which we applied doesn't seem so heavy. Of course, it is full coverage and it is flawless looking, but once you add in all the other pieces of makeup, it doesn't look so stark. For contour, I'm going to apply Inglot's Powder Eyeshadow in the shade 349, and I'm just really softly sculpting upwards almost cloaking the cheekbone. And I'm using a Stelazi blush brush. So I'm just building that contour up quite slowly. I want it to look really seamless. Once you've applied most of the product, you can take off the remainder on the back of your hand and just almost buff over everything, just so that we ensure seamlessness. Now for blusher, I'm going to use the same brush as there's barely any of the contour shade left on it. I've used most of it up. And for blusher, I'm going to be taking MAC Cosmetics Powder Blusher in the shade Blush Baby, which is actually an absolute favorite and go-to of mine. I personally love to wear this color. And I'm just applying a very, very faint amount of it. And to have really seamless looking skin, you kind of have to apply the blusher everywhere, but just very thin layers, just so that you build up. So you have a concentration on the cheeks, but it's all seamless because you have applied it gradually everywhere. So today I'm going to be taking this Baked Galato Swirl by Laura Geller in the shade Diamond Dust. And I'm just applying that on a crown brush highlighter brush. Now this product is very beautiful and it has quite a sheer formula, so it doesn't add too much texture to the skin. It just adds the most beautiful purple pearlescent sheen. A little bit of it under the brow, a little bit of it down the bridge of the nose, and a slight dusting of it through the forehead. So that more or less completes the look. This is my full coverage foundation routine. This method, of course, involves a lot of product, but it is incredibly flawless. It is also incredibly effective, long wearing, and flattering for many a format. Also, my masterclass and meet and greet shall be going ahead less than a week from now, on the 31st of March, the last day of this month, here in London at Arch 406 Long Street Motel Studios. All information about location, tickets, times, shall be within the applicable link within the description of this film. So there is only from now until the event to be able to get your ticket. Due to requests from many of you, particularly my more younger audience, who I understand may have limited means, we are happy to offer some new seats at a reduced price and introduce a new ticket category. The meet and greet option shall remain exclusive to those who have bought VIP tickets, but everyone will have the opportunity to take a self-portrait with me. This, of course, is my very first masterclass on meet and greet, so I am, of course, very excited, and I look forward to seeing you all there. I thoroughly enjoyed creating this film for you here today, and I hope that you have found this film to be either interesting, useful, helpful, or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and of course, take care. Bye.